gives your God power get everything you ever wanted and live the life of your dreams. The Master's Course. Copyright 2010 by Richard Lee McKim Jr. All rights reserved. Let the quest for knowing begin. This next video example is a more detailed look at what it is really like in a virtual world, specifically the virtual world of Second Life. Video example, your Second Life experience. What is this video about? This video example is an introduction to the virtual world of Second Life, which is entirely in the computer. It begins at how to set up your free account and what it takes to get started in your new second life. In this world, you can buy things with your real money and even build things. One of the biggest businesses in second life is real estate development. You can buy a house created by someone else or build your own house where you can invite other people, avatars, to visit. In this computer-generated environment, you are able to create everything about yourself, or should I say, your computer representation and Second Life, which is known as an avatar. You are able to decide what sex you want to be, your body type, size and proportions. You can select your hairstyle, skin pigment, and your starting clothing style. Everyone in Second Life can move about by walking, running, flying, or teleporting from one place to another instantly, which is the preferred method of travel. They also have sports cars and yachts in this virtual world. This video shows all the places that you can go and the kinds of things that you can do in Second Life. You can create and do almost anything in this virtual world that you could do in your real life world. The most important aspect of this computerized adventure is that you are in control at all times. You can decide who you want to talk to, what you want to say, and how you want to look and act. In this world, there are literally hundreds of thousands of others who have expressed and represented themselves in this experience. You can see how they look and what they are doing in the same way as you can stand on a street corner and watch other people who have expressed and represented themselves as humans in this physical world. Just like our own real world, you can walk up to anyone you see and start a conversation. You could be meeting someone who lives next door to you in real life, or someone who lives across the world in another country. For best results, pause this video at this point here, and watch the video example mentioned in the segment. The links are located in the book chapter, and at the end of the book. If you are watching this online, you will find the link for this video example listed in the notes section. Then, after watching the associated video example, continue watching this video from here. What does this example show and what does it mean? The most important point that this video example demonstrates is that in this world, you have absolute control of how you look, your sex, and what you do and say. This example shows us what it is like to have this complete and absolute autonomy over ourselves. We have the same power over our lives in our real world, but we have forgotten it. That was a result of our complete immersion into this experience. That is the point of this video, is that we have the power to change anything and everything about ourselves in our world. If we could and would only believe it, Set up a free account in this virtual world and see what it feels like to create your own representation exactly the way you would like it to be. Take your new represented self around to meet other people and see how they'll automatically accept you as you are. Perhaps you will see me there. Play in this world for a while 
and experience the freedom of expression and creation. Then, begin to create your reality here in your real first life, just as you have imagined it to be. This video example shows how much flexibility you have in creating your avatar representative and your experiences in the virtual world. However, there are some huge differences between how we are representing ourselves as humans and how we are representing ourselves as avatars. The most striking difference is consciousness and autonomy. We think that our avatar can be anything that it wants to and do whatever it wants to, but it cannot. We as humans can have the avatar look any way and do anything we want it to do. The avatar itself has no independent consciousness of its own. It can't do or decide anything by itself. We aren't as capable as the universe in making worlds. Perhaps someday we may develop AI or artificial intelligence to the point where we can infuse our avatars with a mind of their own. However, that would cause some complications. How would you tell your avatar that you have decided to leave that world and that, he, that he's now going to have to die? But for now, we don't have to face those life and death issues. They are just mindlessly doing whatever we want them to do. The universe, on the other hand, is able to create worlds where the avatar equivalent, humans, are self-aware and have their own consciousness. While we do have some direction from our higher selves, we can still go about creating our own experiences pretty much as we choose. There is a price for this self-aware consciousness, however. It is up to us to change our own experiences and make our own world. The avatar had the advantage of having its higher self, you and me, do all the creating and environmental changing. This is an advantage because at the higher level of consciousness, higher self level, we know that we can do anything that we want to and we easily do it. Likewise, at our higher self level, we could remake ourselves and change our world in a flash. But at our normal level of immersed consciousness, it's not that easy, or at least we don't think so. You are actually a very different kind of being in reality and at your core. In your natural form of pure energy, you wouldn't be able to experience and enjoy the many experiences that are available in this physical world. So, like the avatar you created to get into the virtual world to experience it, you created a physical avatar made of flesh and bone so that you could have the wonderful physical experiences in the physical world. Again, just like the avatar example above, we still exist in our non-physical world, even though we have a representation and expression in this one as well. During our experience in the physical, we are still in our non-physical world, but momentarily focused on our experience here. This is just like the time we were in front of our computer playing in the computer world of Second Life. We are still a physical human form, but for the moment we are totally focused on what we are doing in the computer world. In exactly the same way that you decided how you were going to look, what sex you were going to be, and what kind of experiences you would have when you entered your virtual world of Second Life, you made those same exact kinds of plans and decisions before you entered your physical life experience here on Earth. In both cases, you were in charge of planning your own experiences and making all the decisions on your own before you entered your new experiences in your new worlds. It is mind-boggling to realize that we are energy beings who are existing in a non-physical world form from which we have expressed and represented ourselves into a physical world form from which we have again expressed and represented ourselves into yet another virtual world form in the computer. While we are spending our time in our computer world, we are actually non-physical beings representing ourselves as human beings in a physical world, representing ourselves as avatar beings in a computer world. 
our non-physical being inside is the director of our experience as human beings in the same way as we, human beings, are the directors of our avatars in the virtual world. Wild, isn't it? To continue, go to How to Use Your God Power, Chapter Number 10, Segment Number 5. Let your quest for knowing continue.